So while my work is primarily uh, textual, I look at how urban space is imagined in early modern London uh, in order to understand not only the spatial, but the social organization of the city. What does it mean to write the city? What does it mean to textualize the myriad uh, materials, experiences, institutions, and practices that constitutes the complex lived experience of the early modern city? London is, of course, the center for the production of most of early English print, and a large number of texts produced there uh, take the city itself as their protagonists. Uh, in many more still, the urban environment, with its strifes and struggles, its crowds and its commerce, its people and its pageants, uh, forms a context that informs the understanding of early modern culture. Ebo TCP, which is a vast corpus of early English uh, print, uh, currently containing about uh, 50,000 texts, and it will eventually expand to have at least one version uh, or one edition of everything printed in English from the beginning of print to about 1700, uh, provides a vast archive of texts for us to work with. Um, so the problem I've set for myself is to try and use this archive to extract a more nuanced sense of the cultural associations that urban spaces have. Uh, so for example, uh, when in a, in a play by uh, Decker and Green uh, called The Roaring Girl, one of the characters advises uh, his friend on his profligate son, send your son to Wood Street College, a gentleman can nowhere get more knowledge. The audience presumably laughed. We modern readers, lacking the feel for the city, not knowing that Wood Street College was home to a notorious debtor's prison, uh, look at the footnotes to discover uh, why the joke is funny. So my project tries to use the scale of Igbo to identify place names uh, and extract them before we can get to the point where uh, a map like this could turn into uh, a map of uh, places, but also places with particular cultural association extracted from the text surrounding every occurrence of a place name. So we can begin to imagine a, a kind of cultural map of uh, early modern London, where each individual place has, a, has certain associations and you can begin to get a sense of neighborhood, localities, what does it mean? So this sort of uh, cultural valuation that individual places have, Wood Street, Smithfield, etc., cetera, um, at, done at scale computationally. But the, but the part of the project that uh, I'm working on now is, uh, so this is, the, this is the scale of Evo. Uh, the, the top graph shows number of words per year, and the bottom graph shows number of texts per year. And you can see that roughly after you know 1600, uh, the number of texts continues to increase. And by 1640, there is an explosion of a wealth of material, much of it writing about uh, London itself. So, but the while the Igbo archive is a valuable resource because of its relative accuracy, its hand encoded, etc., it also captures all of the variances of uh, early modern spelling, which is very irregular, and the grammatical quirks. So it makes it very difficult for, um, uh, before we can even get to GIS uh, in, the, in the sense of mapping, uh, it makes it uh, challenging to extract place names with most you know, contemporary uh, named entity recognition software. So what I've been trying to do is um, to build a sort of training set that would let me identify place names before I can hand tag them with uh, location coordinates. And so this is a very uh, simple word cloud of just the place names that occur in John Stowe's 1598 uh, book, A Survey of London. So the index, any modern index, would have around 700 to 800 place names in it. And of course you can see, as you would expect, street, lane, hall, etc., are the dominant identifiers associated with place names. But other patterns begin to, uh, uh, begin to emerge from this. So the, the problematic approach here is that all of this is in highly irregular spelling. So street can be, I can think of at least 
five to seven different ways that street could be spelled uh, in a text. So how do you identify a place name? So in order to build a named entity recognition approach, um, what I did was um, you know, ask uh, myself, how, do, how does a reader, uh, even someone who's not familiar with early modern London per se, recognize these as place names? So Clerkenwell, Finsbury, Smithfield, these all have highly informative uh, markers that would tell someone that Smithfield is likely to be a place name rather than a, a, a person. Uh, so, for example, Will, Bury, Field, Ditch, etc. If you had enough examples, you could start to you could teach an algorithm that these are the markers as opposed to Finns or Smith or Shore. So what I do is I turn this. I take, this is just generated from these uh, six place names. I take every place name and chop them up by um, letter engrams, and I can teach an algorithm to extract these place names. So right now I'm at the, at the end of this process where I'm starting to identify place names, and the next step for me is to go on and uh, encode these into a map and build an actual visual representation which is basically the visual counterpart of the of the textual representation or the uh, or the kind of you could think of it as a cultural clustering that I'm looking for where individual place names so if a set of place names are associated with criminals or you know there are dangerous places you shouldn't go there the assumption is they would turn up in similar contexts where they would cluster uh, together in 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 text and also uh, on the map so it's, it's an ongoing experiment, and if you have any thoughts on it, I'd, uh, I'd like to hear them. Thank you.